Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to Two Toe Tags Metal Reviews and today we're going to be checking out the brand new Dark Tranquility album titled Moment. So Dark Tranquility is a band I know of but I haven't really checked out that much. I haven't checked out that much either. I've heard songs here and there. I know what they sound like. like I recall, like I recall enjoying what I heard. Yeah. Um, but there wasn't much. You know? Yeah, yeah, but I've never checked out an album, so this is going to be a bit of cherry popping for me. Um, this band's been around for a while, so that's a little embarrassing as a metalhead because I'm pretty sure they've been around since the early 90s, if not earlier. So they're, they're kind of a, one of those legacy bands. They've been around for a while, they're, they're kind of big on the scene. Um, I believe they're from Sweden. They're one of the Swedish bands, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong. Sometimes I'm wrong. Uh, but yeah, we're going to listen to Moment. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. I hope I like it, man. Yeah, I mean, ni neither of us really have any expectations because we haven't yeah. really heard much at all from this band. Why so, not? well, let's just point out that they won a poll. It was either this yep. or Kill or Be Killed. They won pretty handily. So they won pretty. It was a short poll, but hey, they won like 75% to 25, so they were, they won pretty cleanly. Yeah. So that tells me that you guys are into it. So that kind of gives me some hope. All right, with that being said, we're gonna check out Moment for the very first time in its entirety, and we'll be right back to give you guys our first impressions. Let's take a look. All right, guys, we're back. We just listened to Moment for the very first time, and I'm gonna open up here and say this album was good, straight up. I think this was a good album. I really didn't like have a general idea of what I was expecting. Like I said, I've heard this band like maybe like, a couple of times before, did not really remember much, uh, much, and what we got was like kind of like a doomish, melodic death-ish kind of with some blackened elements. Yep, I agree with all there. that. And that was enjoyable. So I guess um, you know we like to end things on a good note. So I'm going to start with the weaknesses I kind of noticed in this album, and one of them was the harsh vocals. Now, the harsh vocals sounded good. Like overall, it's a it's a nice harsh vocal sound. Kind of reminds me of Ishan's harsh vocals. Yep. And you know it's good on its own. But the only issue I find is that there's no variance to the harshes. Yeah, it's very standard. The harsh vocals that you'll hear early on in the album sound exactly the same, like at the end. You know, like yep. it, there's no difference there. And there's some songs where I don't mind, and there's some songs where I kind of do mind. Yeah. There are clean vocals on this album, and there are some variants to those. Like, those have a little bit more variety than the harsh vocals do. Um, the only song I can really say that really kind of rubbed me the wrong way to a degree is um, track number five, which is Remain in the Unknown, only because there are harsh vocals there um, that kind of feel out of place. You hear clean vocals, and then harsh vocals right after that kind of just ruin the vibe of the song. Yeah, I felt almost the same way for that song, because that song starts off with a clean vocal. It's very nice. Um, the song goes in some really good directions and then kind of feels like it gets lost. Did you just say that it gets lost? Well, it kind of... Uh, I don't know if you used that lost, word or not. But I feel like it doesn't get lost, but yeah. it gets disjunct. It feels like yeah. it falls apart a little bit. It feels like almost like two songs mashing into one. I was I was sitting there listening to it going, this is, I'm liking how this is going, I'm liking how this is going. Then all of a sudden it changed, like the harsh vocals come in and I go, Oh wait a second, that's not really what I was hoping for here and, I, and my vibe started going down and in my notes I, I wrote I hope this song grows on me because I think when you hear it for the first time you not you don't know what to expect mm -hmm. things throw you off man things have a tendency to to put your mind in a weird spot when you're not expecting something so now that you know what to expect I think it might be easier to enjoy it knowing that it does change a little bit mm -hmm. and you know that fluctuation. Yeah, it's a lot easier to kind of get used to it when you know what to expect. Exactly. When you don't, it can be easy for your mind to kind of get thrown off and then you're just thinking, what's going on here? Yeah. So my my biggest downfall with the album was probably the last three songs. Um, only because I didn't really know what to write about them. They felt like it was getting to a point where like it was the same kind of thing over and over again. Except for uh, Empire's Lost to Time, which is the 11th, the second last track, track number 11. The solo in this song was very stylistic, uh, very cool. There actually is some pretty cool solos on this album. There are. The only thing I didn't like about it is that there was a trade-off in the solos, but the second guy, I don't know who plays first or who plays second, the second guy played pretty much the exact same things as the first guy. Usually when there's a solo trade-off, 
there, that you can hear the different of the difference of styles. Now I can hear the trade, but I couldn't tell the difference of styles, which is actually something that I'll bring up that this band has three guitar players, including the singer who plays guitar. Chris Ammit is actually in this band now, which I did not know that I looked up and found out. Um, former arch enemy for anybody that doesn't know, but he is playing in this band and all the fact that there's three guitar players, but it doesn't sound like three guitar players. It sounds like one guitar player through the whole album, other than the, the small little spots where you can hear obviously two guitars playing, but, or three, I guess, if there's mm -hmm. fucking three, which is bizarre. Yeah, I mean, you know, the guitars are probably like the strongest part of this album. They do, they carry a lot of the songs. Like the riffs are really good and the solos range from good to great. Like there's a yeah. lot of really cool solo material in here, specifically on that song actually, Empire's Lost of Time. That was kind of another one of my issues with the album is like once you got to like the last like four tracks, I was kind of running out of ideas, either running out of ideas as to what to write about them, or I'm just kind of writing the same note where I'm like, okay, some cool grooves, uh, nice solo. And that's kind of like the same note happening over and over. So I hope over the week I kind of get to find more individual aspects of the songs that make them stand out. That being said, I want to talk about some of the high points of the album. Yeah. My two highest rated tracks are both kind of a tie, being tracks number four, The Dark Unbroken, and number eight, A Drawn Out Exit. I think The Dark Unbroken's a really pretty sounding song. It's kind of, it's got the, like, out of the first few tracks, it's the kind of more so of an introduction to the synth that's in this album. I think it's also the first song with clean vocals. I think so. I think so. Um, the solo was great. The last chorus made it different, had some harsh vocals, so I thought that was a cool kind of mix up there. Yep. And then a drawn out exit um, had a bit of a meaner riff, which was cool. A groove in 7 8, which sounded really nice. It, was, it just sounded like a really cool jam. There's a polyrhythm at the end. The solo was good as normal. There's a cool shot that happens before the solo. Like that song is a good example of what really makes a song solid. Yeah. Is that it stands out and it really makes you think, wow, that was cool and that was cool. A lot of the songs on this album just didn't really give me much to write about, but that one did. And Dark Unbroken did. I'm going to emphasize that too because the Drawn Out Exit is actually my highest rated song as well. Um, so yeah, that song, it has it has a really big sounding intro. Like it's, it's a song that kind of just stood out amongst the rest for specific reasons like the ones TB Fish just said. Um, I found like the intro was very big and kind of grandiose. Um, also brooding at the same time. The 7-8 groove was cool. Um, the song, you said there was a shot before the solo. Like, did you mean like how it kind of just stops? Yeah. It stops like for like a, like a second, like almost like a full rest, and then all of a sudden comes in with the solo. Um, it's it's a cool song, and it definitely stands out amongst the rest. Um, a couple other highlight tracks for me, though, were uh, Eyes of the World, with the, which is the track directly after uh, a drawn out exit. And the song right before it, which is called um, Eye Deception. Is that what it is? I, just, I can't even read my own Ego writing. Ego Deception. Ego Deception. I can't even read my own writing, for fuck's sakes. Um, but both those songs also got uh, favorable scores for me. Uh, Ego Deception also has some time, time signature changes in there, some 5-4 in there. Um, and the really riffs are really cool. cool. Uh, has a good breakdown section that happens before the solo. Yeah, and I wrote that too. It's like, I've got some aggression to it, like just really kind of kind of punchy, kind of hits home uh, with the riffing and stuff like that. So I think the riffing, like you mentioned already, the riffing kind of carries the album. The guitars kind of carry the album. The vocals are a bit of a down downside to me as well. Um, but the cleans I really liked. Yeah, the, the cleans, cleans I liked and they're sprinkled throughout different songs. There's a couple, one or two songs where it's all clean. I think the last song is all cleans. Um, that might be the only song that's all cleans, but I like the clean vocals. I like his his voice. He's got a nice tone. He's got an, he hits some good notes. Um, but the harshes, it's not a bad vocal. He knows what he's doing. He's he's got a good voice, but it's just too consistent, too much. Yeah, there's like one song I think where yeah in um, Fail State track number ten, there's like a scream that he does, and it kind of sounds a little different to other ones. And because it's been the same harsh vocals the whole time, a difference as small as that, I was able to notice and make a note about. But that was really like the only point where I noticed something like that. Yeah, well, uh, I don't know. We're gonna see what happens. Yep, we're gonna listen to this album for an entire week and we're gonna be back next week to give you guys our full and final review of Moment. Anyways, that's all we got for this video. Remember to like the video if you liked it and tell us in the comments below what are your first impressions. We always love to hear what you guys have to say. I'm TV Fish. And I'm Vile Self. And we'll see you guys later.